Whenever someone talks about traveling to Croatia, everyone can only conjure up coastal towns such as Zadar, Split, and Dubrovnik. While these places are absolutely gorgeous in their own right, I would like to say there is one giant elephant in the room that is wildly underrated, and that is the capital of the country itself, Zagreb. And today I'm gonna show you why. This is a city full of vibrant colors, friendly locals, delicious food, and rich history. So hit that like button and let's begin our discovery. There's no better way to begin our tour here in Zagreb than in Yalachit Square, named after this guy riding the horse, who is jokingly proclaimed by some locals as the only righteous politician in Croatian history. And this plaza is where everything took place, including when the Croatian football team took the second place in the World Cup, and they were welcomed here on this plaza with 500,000 people stuffed onto it, which is literally 50% of the city's population. Just a few steps uphill is the city walls. This is a second version from the medieval one that was way too small for the development of the city. And it features 11 gates, and let me show you probably the most famous of them. This is the stone gate, and inside you'll find uh, a little shrine dedicated to a very special painting. Uh, this painting was survived uh, in uh, an apartment right above the gate in the 1731 fire. Uh, it was covered with ashes, and it is a picture of uh, uh, Mary with, uh, of course, baby Jesus. So people think that, you know, it is a miracle. So people started praying to it. And even until now, you can still see the painting and pray to it. And there are a lot of thank you plaques next to it. In the medieval times, of course, people believe that there are witches and all of the other, you know, very mysterious crafts out there, right? And then one of the popular beliefs is that when they ride their brooms, they'll be flying very close to the surface of the roof. So they'll be flying just above the roof. And the clever citizens came up with the idea of that. <laughs> Can you actually believe it? And I'm not lying, like there's another one up here. You see it up there. And in the center of the old town is St. Mark's Square, with the famous St. Mark's Cathedral sandwiched between the President's Palace and the Parliament. Its red and white checkered roof has become a national symbol and is the representative pattern of Croatia, featured on the flag, on the coat of arms, and many other things. And on the right side of the roof, you can see it is the coat of arms of the old Zagreb, and while on the left side is the old coat of arms for the country. The black animal featured is a marten, which was highly valued as its very expensive pelt was used as the standard currency in this region. And that is the reason why every unit of currency here is called a kuna, which literally means marten in Croatian, and you can still see it is being featured on every single coin. And a few steps away, I'm out of the city gates. The old city gates is actually marked here by this tower, which is also a very popular tourist destination. Why? Well, you can see there's uh, actually a big cannon mounted at the top floor. And that is why every day at noon, a lot of people gather here and watch a particular citizen came up and then just fire the gun. This is because it is a very traditional way uh, in the medieval times to mark the time because uh, nobody had smartphones or watches or whatever. This tradition started in 1877, but it was stopped about a year ago. Why? Uh, the city of Zagreb suffered a very, very bad earthquake uh, last year in March, and then again uh, in December. So after December, so many buildings were damaged all around here in the old town. They realized, wait, if we fire a cannon every day at noon, the shockwave is gonna just slowly, slowly destroy every single building around. And after walking along the old city walls for a bit, I eventually ended up on this viewing platform, looking from this old town into the other side of the ravine, the other old town. And yes, I said two towns because right behind me is the town uh, for clergy, right? Because uh, where I was here in the other town, this is actually the town for basically the common folks, right? The tradesperson, uh, the blacksmith and everyone. While here on the other side, you can see another tiny hill across this tiny river that no longer exists. 
is the hill for the clergy. And so actually the two cities used to fight a lot. So down there, there's actually a bridge that actually is called the Bloody Bridge because all kinds of conflicts between the two cities happened right there on the bridge before they were united to become the city of Zagreb. <laughs> So yeah, this is what the blood bridge is now. Just uh, a tiny street with a completely different name connecting two other much larger streets. So yeah, the only way that you will know is because this souvenir is named Souvenir Bloody Bridge. And the walk circled me back into the main public market, situated just beside the main square, separated by a small alley full of all kinds of florists peddling their winter specialties. Why take a walk when you can stroll around downtown surrounded by all kinds of colorful flowers? And once you reach the market square, it is absolutely stunning. Besides some cultural artifacts that can be points of interest, this market square is also one of the only few places I have seen in the world that serves both as a market but also as a place of gorgeous scenery. I don't recall there is any other open air market that is paddling all kinds of freshly produced local food at a reasonable price under the glistening golden dome of the nearby churches. Compared to a lot of European cities that are overflowing with tourists, this one here in Zagreb is truly by the locals for the locals. And of course, I have to participate by joining in on the most Croatian food possible. And there's no way I can begin my first actual meal in Croatia without the most important meal, okay? This is... Chevapi! Oh. <laughs> oh my god, this is my favorite thing I ever discovered in the entire world. Yeah, it's just little sausage-like stubs of beef and then just like grilled to perfection in a pita bread. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's no better way to enjoy it then washing it down with um, Kalovachko beer. So yeah, severely. Right underneath the steep hill is actually this, the Great Tano. It was built during World War II and cost so much money because uh, it was designed to be basically an air raid shelter. And um, yeah, uh, it has been sitting largely abandoned until 2016 when it was remodeled into a cultural center. And now you can just walk underneath one of the most historical neighborhoods and actually literally walk through history. Oh boy, this is pretty scary. <laughs> wow, the echo here is crazy. Lasagna. L lasagna. Holy moly, it's big. Look at this. It just goes on forever. I can't even see the other side. Here must be the center section. I guess they took away the cultural exhibits. And now I'm at the main cathedral, you can see here, right above there, oh what a beautiful building. You can see it's a neo-gothic style because uh, it was rebuilt after a devastating earthquake in 1880. And then they decided to build it 
with a local material which is limestone which is the worst thing that you can ever build your building with because they are very porous they crack uh, they're basically like chalk but like with extra vitamin d deficiency in the recent 100 years it started to fail and it took them basically i think 40 50 years to completely renovate the entire thing so that it doesn't literally fall apart because uh, one day when the lady was going to pray one part of the facade just dropped right beside her so uh yeah that happened until last year last year uh, when the earthquake happened it was a 5.5 richter scale the right side the right spire completely just fell off broke apart and then dropped onto the building next to it so the city just decided you know what we're gonna dynamite out the left side so that it doesn't look very crooked and it actually worked and this is the old clock it stopped at the moment of the earthquake because it broke down at that moment yeah two past seven Wow, what a beautiful city Zagreb is. And if you enjoyed this video as much as I'm enjoying the city right now, please consider clicking the like button and the subscribe button. And let's continue with our exploration. Well, I'm now walking in basically what they call Lower Town. This is a little bit newer developments uh, that happened in the last century or so. And yeah, look at this. This building is uh, pretty damaged, probably from the earthquakes last year. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, the murals wouldn't be on it, right? It's some kind of a recent trend. It just shows that, you know, earthquakes happen all the time and they just destroy some parts of the livelihood. Oh my God. Yeah, you can even see bricks on the streets. And this part of the city is what they call the Green Horseshoe. Uh, this is because it's like a horseshoe shape of greenery, of a series of parks and plazas connected together. And this is pretty funny because uh, they actually wanted to make it a green ring, right? But they only made it, managed to make it halfway. And wow, everywhere you go, it is surrounded by these almost Victorian style houses. It's almost the same as Paris or Barcelona without annoying touts or scammers trying to come to you for money. Oh yeah, and then you can definitely see the damage coming through. Every single window has a crack. Yeah, and its neighbor is also showing some age. Yeah, hopefully they can put in the money to basically reinforce it. Otherwise, you know, another big earthquake coming might just, you know, spell the end for most of these buildings. Yeah, but you can see every single carving up there. Yeah, they're all peeling off. Wow, welcome to King Thomas Love Square. Yeah, look at this beautiful fountain. It's pretty nice, honestly. And yeah, you can see it's surrounded by these old houses where there are tiny statues and decorations and facades. Oh, and each one of them have different colors. And yeah, that is uh, King Thomas Love right there. And behind it is the main train station. Another important meal here in uh, Croatia is actually a very special dish that they call grandma's dish because uh, every grandma can make it apparently. It's called Stukli. 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 Four to six weeks later. Oh, look at this. Oh my god. 
Yeah, I think um, it's dough and inside it's filled with cottage cheese and something that you want. So I ordered this pepper one. And then uh, on top it's heavy cream and it's just baked to perfection. Oh, look at this. Let me try to... Ooh. Okay, let's give it a try. Ah. Oh, it's so hot. Mmm. Oh. Wow. Cottage cheese is really good. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's very smooth, silky, but at the same time, um, the cottage cheese has like really good uh, texture and flavor. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna finish it all, even though I'm not supposed to. It's probably like 5,000 calories. Day 2 Of course, in the beautiful city of Zagreb, the capital of Croatia, the most visited museum is actually this one. The Museum of Broken Relationships. Ten years ago, a couple decided to break up. They really loved each other, so they decided to hold a tiny exhibition. Uh, when they give back every uh, thing that they give to each other and then they will just basically show to everyone that you know this is everything that we shared and then they amicably break up but unfortunately uh, it got really really popular so they decided to tour around the world and then there are more and more and more people who came over and decided to donate more and more things uh, to them so they decided to open a museum right down there well since I've never been in a relationship and the only long-term commitment I have ever had is with a bottle of vodka sitting in my bathroom um, there's really no better place that I can be like to find joy and happiness in other people suffering than here you know so it is time to go in and demonstrate my the superiority of my Sigma male grind set <laughs> wow look at this mirror huh seven years of relationship Fiber, Fiber Germany yeah, she gets ready in front of this mirror and sometimes stare at it for hours. And she'll go clubbing while he takes care of the two toddlers. And uh, yeah, so actually she has been meeting with another guy and cheating. And after they, he found out, she continued doing that. Holy moly. Like, what kind of heartless beast does that? My god. And then, yeah, they still decided to give it a try and eventually 14 months later, on the protagonist's birthday, she just said that I can't do this anymore and she moved out the next day, like leaving this mirror. Like, what kind of fucking crazy people do this? My God, this is why Song Tzu once said, disregard females, acquire currency. Summer 1988, on a stopover during his travel from Peru and discovering Europe by train. So he went home with me and stayed for about two months after at night I'd put up this disco and one day he was just gone. Great. I found a goodbye note in his little statue which he had specifically brought from Peru in the hopes of meeting a new love. Okay, here's a kicker, okay? What he didn't know was that I had once opened his bag and found a whole plastic bag full of these bottles. I never saw him again. This motherfucker brought more than one of these things and said that, you know, he only gives it to his true love. This is what I call yikes. This girl found out that her boyfriend's cheating on her because of this unique 50s lamp. Yeah, it's one of a kind, so when it shows up in a sex tape online, you know? You know your boyfriend's cheating. Oh my god. It even has a name. The lamp is named Gertrude. You see, this memento is a gift from an ex fiance The title says, I can make you thin. Do I really have to explain anything else? Bro, what the fuck? And as for the meal, I have to try something really local, but I don't have enough stomach space to try everything. So what's the solution? Well, 
luckily a bunch of younger Croatian men and women decided to come up with this the heritage street food yeah I ordered something it's like a half flatbread or some sort but I'm not exactly sure so um yeah uh, would you mind explaining to me what it means like? sure so we will try uh, a flatbread it's traditional around the bun yeah. from Balkan region yeah. uh, in this case filled with some uh, uh, ingredients typical for South Croatia region called Dalmatia over uh -huh. here uh, so you get uh, you have ingredients like salted anchovies coming from Zadar region. You have black olives and capers and extra virgin olive oil coming from surroundings of Trogir. Uh, wild oregano is hand picked from island of Rab, and uh, everything is, as I said, put in this our traditional bun combined. Wow! So everything is from Croatia. Everything is from Croatia, from small small producers from all over the country. Wow! Thank you so much. I so, can't wait to try it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's very nice. Good? Mmm, yeah. Smells good. Oh, it just has that faint anchovy smell. And with a tomato taste. Oh, this is really good. Oh, I'm gonna wash it down with some Kraft Croatian Cola. Oh yeah, oh. Okay, so what, what's this one then? Uh, this one is a combination of meat and cheese. Ah, oh, meat and cheese. Meat and cheese and truffles. Cheese is from Lika, our mountain region. Uh, light cheese made, made from cow's milk. Uh, literally translated squeaky cheese because it squeaks, squeaks a little bit when you chew it. Oh, really? Yeah, prosciutto is coming from Drnish, small town here in North Dalmatia, which is our most famous area for prosciutto production. Oh. Nice. Uh, it's smoked, salted and dried for one and a half year. And you get and you have spread made out of black truffles coming from Istria region, oh. which is our truffle region, and Buzet, which is our truffle capital. Wow, yeah, I can already smell it. Together with some arugula, cherry tomatoes, and truffle flavored olive oil. Wow, thank you so much. You're welcome, enjoy. Oh, it smells so nice. Oh, the truffle smell. Oh, it gets me. Oh. And the cheese is squeaky, so. Several song-filled hours later. Wow, what a beautiful experience. And the host Sylvester is extremely knowledgeable and very, very kind to me. And that is um, the young people, the young Croatians like him and his partners are building the future of this country, even though it has just gone through a series of uh, very, very bad tragedies in the recent memories. And uh, I think, you know, Croatia has a bright future with people like them. And now I'm standing in front of the Museum of Naive Art. Wait, you, you must be thinking that, why is it spelling like that way? There should be a T, right? Because uh, it's a Croatian native art, right? But no, actually, naive art is a very special kind of art form that is very, very prominent here in Croatia. Basically, the biggest creators of naive art in the world are all creation. And what are naive arts? Well, they are basically artists who have never been trained classically. Wow, the first room is... Uh... Ivan Grabuzin, I think, one of the most famous idealized landscape naive artists. Look how tranquil and just natural these colors blend. Did you know Croatia is where the necktie is invented? So that's why there's this big necktie. <laughs> 
who's gonna wear this? Unfortunately, that is all of my adventure here in Zagreb this time. And now I'm taking a train to head to everyone's favorite European capital city, Budapest. And I'll see you there, huh? That is a story reserved for the next part. After experiencing Zagreb with me today, I hope you can agree with me why the capital of Croatia is criminally underrated in the country, with friendly locals, delicious food, and rich history and traditions. I hope next time when you swim by Croatia, do not forget Zagreb along with the major stars like Zadar and Dubrovnik. And I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did enjoy today's stroll in Zagreb, please consider hitting the like button beneath me. And subscribe if you want to join me on the next part in the gorgeous capital of Hungary. I will see you at the banks of the Danube. Thank you.